I mean, pe pineapple and anchovies, that they really sound good together. Uh, you know, pineapple... Hello and welcome to the stream. Uh, that was once again powder until Twitch told me I was live. I don't know how much of it you heard, and I don't listen to the playbacks of my own videos. Uh, well, usually I don't. So I probably won't know either. I, and I don't care. So there's like a whole bunch of stuff going on um, at the same time. Um, so before we begin for today, uh, technically we have begun. When people say before we begin, it's too late. You've already began with the before we begin. But it's an expression, so I'll use it. Before we begin, I do have a low blood sugar again today. Um, see, the BS stands for blood sugar, but it's bullshit. That's the other BS here. I don't feel hypoglycemic, but if I do, so I will have to end the stream early. Blah, 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 blah. I don't even know why I bother. Okay, this is a something that maybe use NASA. We do, we do, did have an issue yesterday when we were predicting eclipses or, you know, comparing our eclipse predictions to the ones that are presumably more accurate. But they were off by several minutes, enough to kind of worry me a little bit, but not too much because we are making assumptions like the, uh, that like planets are round. Uh, we're also ignoring light travel time, but that shouldn't be an issue because uh, Jupiter and its moons are very close together. So that shouldn't have been an issue. And, you know, Earth and its moon are very close together. What's, they're within, like, one light second of... The moon's within one light second of where we are, roughly speaking. So that shouldn't have been an issue. So we, we will... Let me go back to where I was looking. We will uh, maybe look at NASA for better predictions, or we will look at this uh, in detail later. But it's actually not a huge deal. Um, I didn't expect the predictions to be that accurate. We could also consider using... Um, right now we're using the long list of the three radiuses, or radii. So for the Earth, we're using the uh, the e equatorial radius um, instead of the polar radius or some average between them. For the Moon and Sun, they're almost perfectly spherical as it is, so it doesn't matter which radii we use. So today we're going to go ahead, we actually kind of figured out, um, to my satisfaction anyway, penumbral data of, you know, when something enters the penumbra and when it leaves the penumbra, which it turns out is not that interesting because I'm going to make a note here to talk about it, but in answer, mention penumbral eclipses suck. I will misspell mention, and I think to do, I don't have a capital on. Uh, and it turns out because, um, we'll explain this more in detail later, but it turns out if you're on the moon and you're seeing a partial eclipse of the sun, you're getting less light than you normally do. That's definitely true. Uh, so you're reflecting less light than you normally get. But it turns out people on Earth probably won't notice. And that's just because um, even if you're receiving a little bit of light from the sun, uh, the reflection is bright enough that people for some reason don't notice that you're being eclipsed. Ex unless you're very, very close to the terminator, uh, meaning the point where there is a full eclipse, a total eclipse, then they might notice. But if, even if it's an annular eclipse, they probably won't notice, uh, is what I'm saying now. But of course, you should check me. And I'm going to try to get some sources on that. Uh, but I did, did see some casual sources that say penumbral eclipses are, uh, are hard to watch. And again, this is penumbral lunar eclipses, not penumbral solar eclipses, which would be partial eclipses on Earth. Those are easy to see. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go to our, um, I think this is our umbral diagram, isn't it? Yes, it is. Here is the umbral cone. Here is the point where there's total obscuration. Um, there's another issue again that we had before, which is if you're between here and here, um, you're still in what looks to be the umbral cone, but you're not really being obscured because the S and T are in opposition. They're not lined up with each other. So what I'm going to do here is something stupid, and uh, that is, of course, no, no surprise to anyone because everything I do is stupid. Uh, I'm going to actually modify our existing penumbral data because I think so much of the calculations will be the same. Uh, that I, I'm going to say uh, when param equals one, and this is where we're going for our um, this is where we're going for our umbral stuff. Okay. So here's what we want to return. Um, if no part of the planet is well, let's go ahead and draw ourselves a little tiny planet. Um, is that there? That's a tiny enough planet. I'm so happy. I think I accidentally did. Oh, this thing we don't need. Uh, so we don't need a label on this sucker. And we don't need a label on this sucker either. No, no. Oh, well, actually, cool. That totally worked. Okay, hang on. Okay, I think we do need to show it now because... Um, it's 
Stand by. We're gonna, over here, we're going to go ahead and show the point D. We don't want to label it, though. We need to show it so I can move it around. Okay. So here we go. Here's our planet. Uh, I'm killing all the people, except there are no people because this is... Well, this is actually the Earth, so I just killed a bunch of people. Uh, yeah, that is... That's the kind of silliness you will get from my stream. All right. So if you're over here, you're saying that the entire planet is seeing a total solar eclipse. The entire planet is dark. Uh, I want to call this point... Well, actually, I, this is like the maximum eclipse. If you're over here, no part of the planet is fully eclipsed. I want to call that zero. That's the, uh, that's okay. So less than zero. If there is no total eclipse anywhere on T from S, um, and that means that for most viewers, like 93.7 percent of viewers. Um, they're not going to notice that, that this object here is eclipsed uh, because the penumbral part of the eclipse is just too faint to be noticed. So when you enter, and then there's going to be a time when right here where you are fully eclipsed. The entire planet is eclipsed. It's totally dark, and it will you know, remain dark as it continues through the umbra. So one, when, the, when T is totally dark, nope, 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 nope. Anywhere on Q, um, because of course the point we're referring to is Q, one when all of Q is totally eclipsed. Um, less than zero if there's no eclipse. Um, and I'm going to say greater than one because I don't actually mind if we, we go beyond one. Uh, you know, if you're in this sort of situation where you're not only totally eclipsed, but you're beyond the point of total eclipse, we can call that greater than one. That's a, like, you know, a more than a one eclipse. Getting this correct is going to be a little bit tricky because if we had nasty object number seven, uh, which I need, I, so once again, really, I'm going to get rid of F, but I think I'm going to just, oh, shit, I can't do that. Undo. Okay. I can hide F, but I'm not going to. Wha the problem... <sighs> fucking hell. Really? Really? Oh, well, can I fix object? I think there's a way to fix an object. Hang on. Uh, fix object. Woohoo! That might be easier than not. Okay. Oh boy, when I fix that object, I really fix it. I probably meant to fix F with respect to S, to E. All right, let me go ahead and unfix this object. This is more work than needs to be done. It would be very easy to draw a circle with just a radius and a center. But this is part of my doing things in the hardest possible way. Um, so let's. Do that. I, do, I don't think this is going to do what we want, though. I think this is means when I do this. Yep, I've just I've just done that. So that didn't do what I wanted. Let's go ahead and delete all the stuff. Let's go ahead and create a planet, circle center and radius, center here, radius is 2, and what I want to demonstrate here, God willing, is it's quite possible for the planet to be centrally in the umbra, and this is what happens with the solar eclipse on Earth. Well, I mean, we don't have the moon overlapping us, but aside from that, what can happen here is it's quite possible that, you know, the, the Earth is as much in the umbra as possible. But only this part is going to be eclipsed. This part is still going to be, well, it's going to be partially eclipsed, maybe. Uh, no, actually, it won't be. Sorry. Um, right, sorry. No, it will be. This will, people here will see a partial eclipse, but the, that part of the Earth will not be dark. The part of the Earth that's dark is here. So we do have a consideration here that the angular radius of the planet might be big enough that even if it's completely in the middle of the umbra, it is not fully eclipsed everywhere. It's not totally eclipsed everywhere. And that is something we will need to deal with. Um, so it might not be a big deal, but it, but we do need to keep in mind in a case like that one that we just saw, uh, we will never return one because there's never a time when the entire planet is eclipsed. And that is actually true of uh, when we have solar eclipses, we never have a solar eclipse that where the entire planet can see a total solar eclipse. We do run, you know, someone can see total and someone can see partial, that's fine, but nowhere when everyone is seeing a total eclipse. And that means there's no point in time when if you're watching from another part of the, of the solar system, Earth is completely dark. Uh, half of it's always dark because of the dark side, this, you know, where the sun's not shining, but there's never a case when the, the light half, the sun half, the day half 
is completely dark because of an eclipse. We just don't have that situation occurring. I think I've beaten that to death now. So now let's figure out what the formula is that will give us what we want, as we did earlier for the penumbral eclipse. And as always, we're going to just do it right here in the middle of, I think I created a notes at one point. Um, wow. They missed some good notes. I don't know what the hell they are, though. I mean, they're, they're, they're in Git. Wow. I should probably look at that more. Okay. So, for Umbra, oh, and I guess we're going to add the condition that if your distance, this is Q, by the way, and it's on the origin, so we will go ahead and un, let's screw with, let's not even do the axes. Let's help with the axes. Because the Q is going to be at the origin by definition. Um, so if Q is further from P, if PQ is greater than PT, uh, we again have that special situation that it's not possible for you to be in the umbra at all. So PQ greater than PT, return minus one. Uh, yes, okay, and we will put that in here. Um, minus one, if Q is closer to umbral point, no. Oh, no, actually for us it's the other way around. This is the umbra, so if it's further from umbral point than T, then there's no way there can be an eclipse because it's on the wrong side of, uh, it's on the wrong side of the, uh, means it's over here somewhere. And in, you know, in, in the cone of the umbra, but not actually in the umbra. By the way, uh, before I forget, um, if you were to continue this line and this line, what you'd have here is called the anti-umbra, A-N-T-E umbra. Um, and that's where you would see like an annular eclipse or a transit, but not a total eclipse. It is not important for what we're doing, um, and neither is the penumbra, by the way, uh, but the penumbra, I thought it was important, so I did some work with it. The anti-umbra I know up front is not going to be useful for us, because like with a partial eclipse, if someone on the moon is seeing an annular eclipse, which is impossible because the Earth is too close, but you know, somehow let's say that happened, um, people on Earth would not notice a su significant darkening at that part of the moon. And again, we'll talk about that uh, in part of my answer. I'm going to explain why that is. But again, antumbral or, you know, which are transits and annular eclipses are not of interest to us. Um, so we're not going to consider that case where we could. I mean, we, we, we could figure out, you know, those angles are going to be equal because of vertical angles and blah, blah, blah. But it's not important to us, so we're not going to consider it. Okay, so we have this first case here where if PQ is greater than PT, uh, we will return minus 1. So now we look for the cases where, uh, you know, where we're approximately in here. So if you're at this point here, uh, we would say the angle minus the angular width of, of Q. Um, so that would be, and this is very rough. We're just, we're not even using real, real variables here. This is just for our notes. Um, uh, equals the umbral angle, N not penumbral, but we're going to end up calling it penum because, well, actually we might not. So angle Q is equal to, uh, I is, um, right, so the angle to Q, and again, we need to be careful here because this is an absolute value, angle Q minus angle delta um, is this angle minus this angle, but th this is a negative angle, and this is a positive <laughs> angle, so to get rid of all that crap, we're just going to say absolute value. We're going to take the absolute value of the Q angle, Subtract it from the always positive Q ang uh, the, uh, the the delta angle, and say if that is less than umang, uh, we are starting our eclipse. Uh, so must return less than zero. So the the the, uh, the part that's going to be difficult about this is when we decide we're in a full eclipse, uh, the whole planet's in an eclipse, um, because again that may never occur. That's that's the problem here. We need to watch out for the case where it will never occur, um, because the planet at its the distance that it's at will is too big. The angular radius is bigger than the coronal radius, which I guess we could compute as a special case. But I think we don't have to. I think we can get away with just using a formula here. Okay. So the the, the beginning of the uh, the umbral eclipse is when um, angle angle Q plus angle Q delta is less than the coronal radi the coronal the conar radius. Uh, so I think we can actually just say that absolute of angle Q plus angle delta um, that actually looks really nice if it works. 
is less than the umbrella angle. In other words, we've gone from where the um, uh, plus the ang ang delta to, you know, from minus ang delta to plus ang delta. Um, then this is one. This is the the. Um, well, this is uh, sort of greater than one, but at the exact condition where that occurs, it's actually exactly equal to one. Um, so I think we can do this with uh, math. We can do this using a linear a linear formula here. So the absolute value of ang q minus ang q delta uh, is equal to umbang. So I guess we'll subtract from umbang. Uh, we want to return zero, and if you're right at the other point where um, you know, you're, you're totally inside the umbra, you want to return one. And then we could create a linear function uh, that is zero here and is one here by doing our favorite, do I, did I really want to, yeah, I do want to do it, because this, this is the variable that's changing, this is why. So, let's get funky here. Um, Okay, a lot of pop-ups, by the way, are showing that you can't see because they're on my machine uh, that are telling me that I have more important things to do than stream. As you can tell, I don't care. Also, oh, where did my blood sugar thing go? Anyway, I don't care about that either. Okay, so do, to do this, we have a rise. I'm going to do this carefully now. 1 minus 0 is the rise, so that's 1 over the run. This is the slope of that line. And the run is going to be this... We and why don't we just put it on the next line? Um, this minus, and there is some cancellation, which is why I'm doing it this way. Uh, this. Mm, I've got an extra parenthesis somewhere that I don't want. No, this is fine. This is fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this into Mathex just to see if it has any use whatsoever. Um, um, and to do that, we will have to convert the absolutes. I think that's the only thing we have to change, literally. And I think the only thing that's going to cancel is the umang, which is sort of obviously going to cancel. Uh, I was hoping maybe more would cancel, but I don't think it will. We might be able to do something clever with the absolute values if we happen to know that angle Q is... NQ delta is always positive. I don't... Th that's not a guarantee. That's a maybe, if we're lucky, this will happen. Am I, do I have Mathix running anywhere now? Not here, not here, not here. Well, we will run it here now. Uh, almost a complete waste of time. Okay, so as we expected, the um ang fell out. We have um, this sucker here. Now, if these absolute values were both positive, and we don't know for a fact that they are, what the hell? Why does this never work? Um... So, so we have the unang falling out as expected. So now if we knew for a fact that um, that uh, ang delta and ang q were both positive, uh, this would reduce to um, twice ang q, uh, and the ang deltas would fall out, which we don't want. Um, twice ang angle q, well, let's see. So twice angle q, which already I don't like, minus twice angle delta or something is less than umang. Or actually, I guess that's, that's umang has fallen out of this equation. So that is, um, that is what, yeah, there, there's something fundamentally wrong with this because I think umang has to be involved somehow. I mean, uh, oh, it's actually one over all this, but that still doesn't help, though. Um, yes, uh, this something wacky has gone on here. Um, so, so let's see if if the formula looks right with the um, let's let's see what this value is at the two extremes here. I don't think we can. I don't think we'll be able to simplify this anymore, but I'm concerned that even this simplification is false. Now is the time in this show, haha, <laughs> that I look to see, hello, a Mr. User person that has was here yesterday, and if you want, you can say hi on the stream. Well, you can't, because 
um, um, because the chat is not visible on stream. But you can say hi to me if you want, or you can continue to lurk silently if you so wish. Or you can offer me some advice as to how the frick I calculate this correctly. And yes, I did cheat, and I did decide that if, um, if the planet is further away than t, uh, we just give a nonsense value of minus one. We don't even bother to try to calculate, you know, how close we are to being an eclipse. But anyway. Okay. So th this looks like it's going to be completely wrong, and yet it is showing up from our, um, from our uh, formula, which is just weird. So angle Q delta... Yeah, that's going to be angle Q plus angle delta, this. And angle delta is always positive, by the way. Um, angle Q need not be. So what I'm thinking like we can say here is... Yeah, something's very, very wrong here. So let's just go back to this and see even if this is correct. Um, so if angle Q is equal to umang plus... Uh, angle delta, in other words, it's right here, or technically could be right here as well. Um, then this value is going to become, let's see, um, hmm, now I'm wondering if this, this is actually the absolute value. Yes, I think I see the issue, maybe. So if anyway, if, uh, angle Q minus angle delta um, no, this is wrong. This is wrong. We actually want the absolute value of angle Q and then subtract off. We could say absolute value of angle delta, but angle delta should all, well, we'll do it. But angle delta should always be positive. So that shouldn't be an issue. And over here, also the absolute value of angle Q plus angle delta um, minus um, ang. We still have issues here, but let's, 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 brave, let's brave through. Okay, so if the absolute value of ang q happens to be like ang q, the umbral angle, aha, yes, the umbral angle plus ang delta, so the umbral angle plus ang delta, it's just barely touching, then this becomes um, um ang, umbral angle plus ang delta minus ang delta, that becomes zero, that, which is good. But, so if this is happening here, um, if, if angle Q, its absolute value, is less than the umbral angle minus the umbral delta, which might be impossible, by the way, because it's possible that even at zero degrees, it, that doesn't work. But that's fine, because that's what, we, that's what we're expecting. We don't, if, 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 the, the, if the planet is too big to be ever fully eclipsed, we want to know that. So here, if we're at this point here, um, the absolute value of ang q will be ang q minus uh, ang delta, right? It'll be this minus, um, wait. Uh, it'll be umbral value minus, what the hell am I saying? So in this position, the absolute value of ang q will be, uh, right, right, it'll be uh, angle, It'll be the umbral angle minus uh, the ang delta. So this will be umbral angle minus ang delta. Aha! Here's where we have the issue. And then when we add <laughs> ang delta, this will be also be zero. That's not good. It's interesting, but it's not good. So what I probably meant to do is put a one minus in front of all this. So that becomes one minus minus plus. Uh, so let's see if that's true now. Um, so if the absolute value of ang q is um, is equal to um, um minus uh, um angle minus um angle minus um, angle q. So that's what we have here. Right? It's the umbral angle minus the the radial angle. Okay. So if this happens, then we have one minus this minus ang delta plus um ang. And let's see what that gives us. I actually don't know, by the way. And apparently, <laughs> apparently neither is Mathix. No, I actually did that incorrectly. I cheated. I called it um ang in one place and um angle in the other place. So we, we will fix that. We, that. That we really should do. Okay. So what does this become here? 
1 minus ang delta plus ang q. Again, the problem here is that um, amang has somehow disappeared from our calculation, which is not good. Uh, all right, so if the if we're here at ang delta, wait, yeah. So at this point, this value would be angle q would be um, yeah. We we we've messed something up, and I think I know uh, what that is. Uh, one my um, so this is the value that becomes. Um, zero the moment you cross that the threshold. So I think we, I think we're okay on this one actually. Um, but I think on this one we need we're missing another negative sign. Oh yeah we are because we said one minus the whole thing. So this should be minus umming. That looks a lot better. Yeah. That still looks a little weird, but I think that that is actually correct. Let's let's see if that is what we want here. Okay, so that would be one minus um ang, which we can't change. Uh, angle Q, which would be we can't change either, actually. No, sorry, we can't. Sorry, 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 sorry. It's ang delta we can't change. Uh, angle Q, which is going to be now um, its absolute value is going to be um ang minus ang delta. the whole thing and I guess we should probably mention this is the absolute value of angle Q but I think we're okay there minus ang delta minus um bang what does that give us I don't know that gives us 1 minus 2 angle delta minus um bang mm. Still not getting it. All right, let's try this another way here. We 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 are being a little bit too too uh, smartass here for ourselves. Um, if the absolute val value of angle Q, um, is equal to the umbral angle plus the delta angle, that's a zero. Equal to the umbral angle plus angle delta, which is always positive. And maybe we should be consistent with how we name these for, so angle Q, this will be just ang Q, this will be ang delta, and this will be um ang. We're gonna use a little bit of camel casing here. Um, then value should be zero, okay? So if the absolute value of angle Q is equal to the umbral angle minus, uh, wait, 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 minus this minus the minus the um, angle delta the value should be one okay that's actually pretty clear here um, so 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 Um, so this one's actually pretty easy. We can just subtract and say absolute value of angle Q minus um ang minus ang delta is zero. But I don't, hang on, let's, let, me, let me look at this a little bit better. Um, so the value needs to change from zero to one as we go from um ang plus ang delta to um ang minus ang delta. Um, right. So am I just getting back what I had up here before? No, I am not. That's the problem. Okay. So the value of uh, whatever we're looking at here is going to... Uh, there we go. Here's what we're doing. When the value of x, which is the absolute value of angle Q, is this thing, we want to return 0. Here we go. And when it's this, we want to return 1. So that's where we need our transition to go from Basically, as it goes from amang plus ang delta to amang minus ang delta, uh, we need to have this decrease smoothly. Okay. So that's that's where I was messing up. So this is rise. Come on, <laughs> rise is one minus zero. No, 
the run is um umming <laughs> this is not gonna work minus umming plus ang this is not gonna work actually it might work I like saying that it's not gonna work and then saying it might work all right, let's see what this is. The problem is, I think, in this case, again, we're going to have umang cancel out. But that might actually be okay. So this is minus 2 ang delta. Um, oh, you know, that might be okay, because that's just the slope. That's just the slope. Um, so this is x, and our x here, by the way, is the absolute value of angle q. Plus... So the, the slope, the intercept, you know, better frickin' have a uh, humble angle in it, or we're, uh, we're gonna be very ups upset. Well, we're not, I am. <sighs> okay. So when ang delta, sorry, when ang q is equal to um, um ang plus all right, one more time. So be careful here. We're getting x, y. When y, that's the x. This is the x-intercept because y is 0. Uh, this is the slope. Uh, so it's going to be x times the slope plus b. And when x is equal to um, omega n plus omega delta, we want 0. So omega n plus omega delta over minus 2 ang delta plus b equals zero. Boy, oh boy, is that ugly. It's probably not really that ugly for b. So what, what is the value of b that makes that true? And again, I probably don't need mathics for this. I'm just being lazy. And that says b is equal to this thing. Okay, and this one I'm going to make sure... Why don't I get a co copy and paste? Let me do, okay. So probably I'm being a, a bitch here, but... Um, so the formula here is plus what? Seriously? I wanted to copy that line. People are dorks. Um, I'm guessing this is going to simplify. Um, okay. So now this, so it's x over this plus this, and actually, I mean, in a way, this can't simplify because the x is, you know, the x is the unknown value here. So let's see. But I'm going to try simplifying it anyway just because, oh, that's not bad. So this actually looks like a, it's a sort of useful formula here. And once again, it's going to not copy it correctly. I knew it. Ha ha! This time I predicted, though, it wouldn't work. So let's go ahead and do this. For some reason, copying the whole line works sometimes, whereas not copying the line, copying part of the line does not work. Okay, so what we have here is ang delta. Does that simplify? I mean, uh, I guess we could simplify that if we wanted to. All right, so now let's see if this formula does what we want. When x is equal to um, uh, the umbral angle, sorry, one more time, the umbral angle plus angle q, umbral angle plus angle q, this gives us an element plus, um, I'm pretty sure this is the right formula, by the way, um, ang minus, and this is where x becomes um, uh, the umbral angle plus Q over two ang delta. Let's see what that simplifies to. I think that'll simplify to like well, the better simplify to one because that's what I want. Um, sorry, to zero. I mean, wait, wait, wait. Did I get this backwards? Um, no, I'm good. So this should simplify to zero. Um, and I'm sorry, I meant to say um, it's going to be umbral angle plus angle delta. So 
when this happens, we should get a zero out of this damn thing. Yay, we do. So now we'll go to the other case. Um, we're just going to copy this because I'm getting tired. Now we go to the other case where uh, p uh, the angle is less than or equal to a mang minus the ang delta. In other words, it is so it is so small now that it's totally within the the, uh, the planet is totally within the um, the umbral cone. Yes, it works. Awesome. So this is our magic function. Um, and I will mark it as our magic function because otherwise we will forget it is our magic function. Alrighty. So once we get that uh, umbral angle, which is not hard, and once we get the um, um, no, that is not our magic function. Um, wrong! This is our magic function. Where x is here is going to be the angle q. But we simplified that, didn't we? We did. So this is our magic function. I'm losing my freaking mind. Alright, this is our magic function. And where x is the angle q. Okay. So that's what we need. I think that is the simplified form that we decided we can get. We can probably, you know, we could tweak it further to simplify it more, or, you know, we could state it in different ways. At some point, the question is, what is the simplest form? And this appears to be it. If we were to expand this form, we'd have one half plus, and we could combine those last two terms so we'd have, why am I doing this? I don't know, I'm insane, that's why. I think because this actually shows it a little bit better, Amang minus angle Q over twice ang delta. That I think actually shows it a little bit better because uh, the one half says, you know, we're, we're symmetric around this point. And when um, angle Q is big enough this becomes minus one half, and when it's small enough, it becomes one half. Okay. So now that we have this magic formula, uh, oh, I'm really unhappy. I've been on the stream for 40 minutes, less than 40 minutes, and I am becoming hypoglycemic. I am so sorry. I need to eat food, uh, which, which is different from eating non-food, I guess. No, it's the same. Um, so I'm sorry, I'm going to have to stop the stream. I will try to come back after I've eaten a little bit. Thank you for watching, and uh, see you later.